How's it going Rogues Gallery and welcome to another Flesh and Blood video here on Red Zone Rogue. Today we are talking about Limited. Specifically we are talking about Monarch Sealed. One of the formats that will be at the Calling Las Vegas. And so think of this as kind of like a new player guide to Flesh and Blood Sealed with a focus on Monarch. We're gonna be opening up a Monarch Sealed Pool and I'm going to be walking you through all of the decisions and my thought processes whenever I make a Sealed Flesh and Blood Pool. I know there's a lot of new Flesh and Blood players out there and I know a lot of people love to play Limited. It is personally one of my absolute favorite ways to play any card game and Flesh and Blood is no exception. It is just so much fun. It's a great way to start playing. If you don't have a deck, if your opponent doesn't have a deck, crack open some packs and do some sealed. It also takes a lot of the money aspect out of it. You just buy some packs, play some games. Speaking of buying some packs, if you're looking to pick up some Flesh and Blood product, Monarch or Tales of Aria First Edition, go ahead and check out my affiliate link with Channel Fireball. Go ahead and use Rogue at checkout and it goes and supports me and I greatly appreciate it. Or you know what? You know what's even better than that? Go ahead and buy from your local game store. So without further ado, let's open up some packs of Monarch and um, I'll walk you through my processes that I go through when I build a sealed pool. Let's do it. All right, so let's start talking about some Flesh and Blood Sealed, specifically Monarch. So if this is your first time delving into Flesh and Blood Sealed at all, let me give you a couple quick rundowns on what we're doing here. We're gonna be opening up these six booster packs and trying to build the best 30 card minimum deck that we possibly can. Like I said, the deck has to be at minimum 30 cards, no maximum. You also have access to all tokens regardless of what you open up in your booster packs, including all of the young heroes and all of the weapons. So don't worry about pulling any of the heroes or the token weapons in your booster packs. You have access to those from the get-go, so just keep them in mind as you're building your deck. For Monarch, we have Chain, the Shadow Room Blade, and we're not gonna go over these in you know heavy detail in this video, but I will quickly go over what they do and what kind of decks they lend themselves towards. So Chain is a Shadow Room Blade hero, which means you can use Shadow cards, Room Blade cards, Shadow Room Blade cards, and generic cards in his deck. Chain is really good at going wide, playing a lots of cards, lots of small attack cards, in a single turn, specifically from his banish zone. He has a built-in way to give his cards go again at the cost of generating the Soul Shackle tokens, which kind of take cards from the top of your deck and put them in your banish zone. A lot of his cards let you use those cards from the banish zone, but it kind of makes it so you run out of a deck pretty quickly in limited, so use that very sparingly. His uh, weapon is Galaxy Black, which is a pretty efficient weapon. Only attacks for one for a single resource. But if you played a card from your banner zone, it gets plus two until end of turn. And if it hits a hero, it does an extra arcane damage to them, which is not too bad at all. We also have Bolton, the light warrior hero. Bolton is really good at setting up for big turns. He's pretty card intensive. It says, if you charge this turn, attacks you control have an additional plus one while defended by an attack action card, so it's pretty good. He's really good at attacking into other aggressive heroes. And as a reaction, you can banish a card from his soul and uh, an attack with a target attack with an attack greater than its base attack gains go again. So he can also go wide as well, and he has a built-in way to pump up his own attacks. His weapons of choice are the dual hatchets, the hatchet of body and the hatchet of mind. They don't have go again innately, so you'll have to give them go again with something like Bolton's special ability, but they're pretty good. They attack for two for a single resource, and then if you attack with the other one, then it gets an additional bonus. So the first time you attack with your hatchet of mind, it comes in for two, and then if you attack with your hatchet of body, since you already attacked with the mind, it comes in for three. And then if you attack with the mind, it'll come in for more damage, that kind of stuff. So that's what uh, Bolton is. Once again, he's a light warrior hero, so we can play light cards, warrior cards, light warrior cards, and generic cards. Next up, we have Prism, probably one of the easier decks to build and to pilot in Limited. Prism is a light illusionist hero. She has a once per turn instant of two resources, banish a card from her soul and create a spectral shield token, which helps prevent some damage. She also has the Iris of Reality, which is a very interesting weapon. It says, during your action phase, illusionist auras you control are weapons with four attack and once per turn action for three resources, attack, go again. So she turns 
all of those little spectral shields that you get into weapons. And there's also some other, you know, there's some other auras that you can pick up in your sealed pool that you can use as weapons with Iris of Reality as well, but a lot of the time you're just gonna be using those spectral shield tokens. Finally, we have Leviah, one of my personal favorites from the set. She's a shadow brute hero, um, and her hero ability is basically just not dying. It says, if a card with six or more attack has been put into your banner zone this turn, cards you own lose blood debt until the end phase. And blood debt just means if they're in the banner zone, you lose life for each one that you have. So she basically makes it so you don't lose life to your blood debt cards, which means you can play a lot of blood debt cards with Leviah and, you know, hopefully not die to them. Her weapon is the Ravenous Meat Axe. Has a once per turn action for two resources, to attack, attacks for three. And it says whenever you attack with Ravenous Meat Axe, draw a card, then discard a random card. If a card with six or more attack is discarded this way, it gets plus two, so it will come in for five. Not too bad, not too bad at all. And so that is the breakdown of all of the heroes. Like I said, we're not gonna go super into it. Um, just kinda give you an idea of what we're looking for when we're doing sealed. Um, this isn't a new player guide. This is just a new guide to sealed. So I'm, I'm approaching this with the assumption that you at least know how to play Flesh and Blood and you're familiar with most of the mechanics going on here. With that said, let's open up some packs and I'll tell you my thought process for doing a sealed pool. So let's start with this, this, this pack right here, this good old light pack. Monarch is a pretty interesting set to do sealed with and that's just because there's, there's not a lot of generic cards, right? There's a lot of these talent cards. So this is a Shadow Rune Blade card. So I'm gonna sort these accordingly. So Shadow Rune Blade cards will have their own pile. This is a Shadow Brute card. Then we have another Shadow Rune Blade card. We have a Light Illusionist card, a Light Warrior card, and these are gonna form my main piles here. And then I'm also going to put the um, class cards with these as well, because for all intents and purposes, they're gonna go in the same decks, right? So this is an Illusionist card. It's gonna go in the Light Illusionist pile. This, however, is a Shadow card. It could go in either Rune Blade or Brute. So we're gonna put that up top right here in its own little pile. Um, this is a Generic card, Surging Militia. It will also go in its own pile. And this is a Light card. Once again, Illusionist and Warrior can play with this card, so it will go in its own pile. So these are kind of kind of be our flex slots here, and these will be the you know pretty pretty heavy like specifics um, pools basically. I said that weird. These are going to be the pools that are very specific to the classes, right? Illusionist, brute, warrior, and rune blade, and these are going to be the flex slots up here. So we have another uh, shadow card. We have another light card, and basically, as I'm going through these, I'm looking for cards that really want to pull me into a specific pool one way or the other. So I'm looking for just really powerful cards. For the most part, commons aren't really gonna do that for sealed because we're gonna have a lot of options here. So I mostly wanna look at our rares and higher. So this is a foil stony Wootenhog. Um, here we have, this is an Ebonfold. So while you have access to the tokens, you know, the weapon tokens and your hero tokens, you do not have access to the common equipment. You have to pull them. So this is actually a card in consideration because it's a shadow equipment and it's good to just have a full set of equipment. So we will keep that, put that to the side here. We have a rare Seek Horizon, not a really exciting rare, so that doesn't really pull us anywhere anyway. Ooh, Herald of Judgment. This is a specialization. This is a prism specialization and a quite good one at that. So this immediately helps pull me towards prism. And I know prism's already good. And here we have a Leviathan token. We're gonna put those off to the side here. So yeah, let's just open up some more packs and we'll just talk to the thought process here. Um, like I said, to be honest, the way it works, at least for me, is just to figure out which hero you wanna play. Once you figure out which hero you play, it's really easy from there because you're gonna basically use almost all of your available pool because we have it split four ways. Once you pick your hero, say we're gonna do uh, Illusionist, it's like, I'm gonna run almost all the Illusionist cards almost all the light cards, because they can work in here, and then whatever the best generic cards are. So a lot of it is just finding the best cards and seeing if you have enough playable cards to make that into a viable deck. That's really the best option, um, the, the best thing I can, best advice I can give you. Uh, Wartoon Herald Blue is actually not bad at all. Um, here, let's put this a little bit lower. 
put that a little bit lower into like the the key the key pile. Herald of Tenacity is also really good. Uh, Talisman of Dowsing is not good at all. Yintianti. We have a Void Wraith, Rising Solar Tide, uh, Overload. So honestly, like pr Prism right here, right? We have some really powerful angels. We have a specialization. The Brute cards are pretty good, two Boneyard Marauders, but there's nothing really pulling us there. We have a Dust Path Pilgrimage. This is a, f it's hard to tell because the foiling is really dark, but this is a foil rare. This is an okay rare. We'll put that down here, but it's just an okay rare. Ooh, Gallantry Gold is quite good for Warrior. I'm just gonna put all the equipment over into one pile. We have another Dust Path Pilgrimage, a red one. Pretty good. And another Warrior rare, Valiant Thrust. That's also not that bad. Hmm, I mean, maybe. And then just uh, another token. By the way, this is what a Spectral Shield is, just in case, in case you didn't know. All right, so I'm still honestly, at this point, I mean, Warrior is up for contention, but still Illusionist Prism, that, that's kind of where I'm at. We have uh, Arcanic Crackle here. Dread Screamer is a good go again card. Bounding Demigon's a pretty good one. Take Flight is quite good in Bolton. Another Wartune Herald, which is also quite good. Uh, Courageous Steel Hands, a decent attack reaction. This card, Lunatide Plunderer, is really, really good and limited. Do not underestimate it because it attacks for six, which means you can pop those pesky illusions. So, quite good, quite good. We have Brandish. Ooh, Warmonger's Recital. I think this card's actually quite good as well. Blinding Beam, pretty good for um, Prism specifically. Illuminate Blue is not that great. Ooh, we have a Foil Majestic here. All right, so this is a Foil Majestic Deep-Rooted Evil. Um, unfortunately, it's not what I would consider a huge bomb, but I think it's pretty good. This, hmm. Do I like Deep-Rooted Evil more than Herald of Judgment? Maybe, because Deep-Rooted Evil kind of like helps you keep doing stuff. It costs three, tax for six, doesn't block, which is kind of a bummer, but it says if a card with six or more attacks has been put into your banish zone this turn, you may play Deep-Rooted Evil from your banish zone, which is quite good. Hmm. That's quite good. Um, I have a feeling we might want to go towards that. Ooh, Ironhide Plate. Any of the generic equipments that block are decent, so that's really nice to get. And a Howl from Beyond could be good in Leviah, followed by a Majestic Shadow of Urser. Okay, this is going to be a spicy pool. This is a really, really good card for Chain. It's just basically a free, cost zero, and attacks for two, and you can banish a card with Blood Debt from your hand, and the gains go again, and presumably, the card with blood that you banish, you can just play. So, really good. And then we have a uh, prism token. So, yeah, this is going to be very interesting. Um, I can see us going many different ways here. Let's let's see what the other three packs have. So we have a graveling growl, not too bad. My packs are my my piles are starting to uh, congregate. All right, we have a organic crackle. A worldly Bellow, Herald of Protection is quite good. Basically, you just want really powerful, efficient cards. Um, like I said, uh, cards that are good in Constructed are also quite good in Limited. Uh, we have Engulfing Light, we have Spears of Surreality, Frontline Scout, Rally of the Rear Guard. Rally of the Rear Guard, by the way, is actually really good in, um, in Brute for Leviah because you can turn those cards that don't block at all into cards that actually block, which is not bad. We have Illuminate, another Seek Enlightenment, Pound for a Pound, a Foil Rip Through Reality. This is a really good card for Chain. Dreamweavers, okay. So this is a um, one of the Illusionist equipments. A really good one too, actually. So it helps me pull, helps pull me towards Illusionist as well. Uh, Invigorating Light's another pretty good one. And another Valiant Thrust, hmm, interesting. We do have, the thing is, is we have like a decent amount of Warrior rares, but no like super bomb warrior cards. Hmm. It's interesting. I, even though we have a, a decent amount of okay rares for warrior, I'd rather take the bomb cards because we're only making a 30 card deck. Ooh, Seeds of Agony is really good for chain. Smash with Big Tree is okay. That's a brute card. Bounty Demigon's really good. Second Swing is all right. Herald of Rebirth, any of the angels are quite good. Uh, Steel Hand, we have a Minnowism. Surging Militia, Void Wraith. A lot of these cards don't really help determine what we're gonna be playing until it's like really close, until it's really close. Ghostly Visit is quite good. Illuminate's all right. 
We have a foil writhing beast hulk. This is a rare, it's a red pitch one, which is actually really good. Ooh, Aether Iron Weave. Okay, so this is a Rune Blade equipment, a really good one too. Hmm. That could that could uh, mean something here. We have a Writhing Beast Hulk, the yellow one, not as good as the red, but not bad. Out Muscle and a Soul Shackle. Basically, for Levia, we also want to look for a lot of six attack cards, right? So if we have a lot of six attack cards to turn on her hero ability, so she doesn't die to Blood Debt, that's really good. So stuff like Out Muscle coming in for six. It's not bad. It's not bad. It's something we want to keep an eye on. Um, all right, last pack. It looks like either way, we're not really going to end up with a full equipment loadout, which is fine. A Bellow, Screamer, Bounding Demagon is quite good. Chimera. Any of the over-costed, like uh, under-costed, high attack cards for Illusionist are really good in Limited. It's just they're, hard, they're really hard to defend against. The fact, like... They require your opponent to have six attack cards, and it's going to be hard for them to have six attack cards in limited. We have a Stony Wooten Hog. Ooh, a foil equipment here. Oh man, if this was first edition, this would be cold foil. This is a Halo of Illumination. It's basically basically the Ebb and Fold counterpart. All right, I, I think I think Prism's a a pretty good bet here. Ooh, and an Ironhide Legs. Yo, okay, yeah, yeah. We have also have a Howl from Beyond and a Glisten. Glisten's going to be quite good. This would be quite good. Um, and another Leviathan token. Very interesting. All right, so I think this is a very interesting setup. Uh, personally, let's look at the equipment here, right? So we're gonna be running the Ironhide no matter what. Ironhide legs, Ironhide plate. And then we have Ebonfold or Halo. So we're gonna have a headpiece no matter what. And then here are like the, the other flex slots, right? The only one we did not get is uh, Brute, which is kind of a bummer because her leg equipment is really important. I honestly think, given this pool and given what I know, let's let's look at let's hold on, hold on let's let's take a look here. Let's take a look here. So what are we looking at in terms of powerful attacks here? We have a lot of yellows, not a ton of reds. We do have this Herald of Judgment, which is quite good. Um, and then for Brute, we have. This Deep Rooted Evil, which is really sweet. We have, how many six attacks do we even have here? We have Writhing Beast Hulk makes two, three, four, five, six. Six, six attacks plus, let's see. We got a couple in here as well. Uh, by couple, I mean one. So six, seven. Oof, I'm not sure I like this. Uh, eight, eight. All right, yeah. Um, eight out of 30, not a good rate. I have a feeling we're just gonna die. <laughs> so pr probably not, probably not Levia. Even though we uh, we got this foil deep rooted evil, I, I don't feel comfortable doing that. Uh, especially since we didn't get our equipment either. Uh, for chain, we have a couple bound, ooh, three bounding demagons, a couple of rip through realities, which is another really good one. Any of these cards that deal arcane damage are also quite good because it's going to be just free damage, basically. So any of the arcane damage cards are, are, are all quite good. I think Chain could be a definite option. Yeah, I think there's some good stuff here, especially since we got the Shadow of Urser. And then for Chain here, we just want to look at any of the cards that have Blood Debt that you can play from your Banish Zone, um, which is a, de a decent amount. A decent amount here. So we have at least like we have a couple ghostly visits, which are pretty good. The the void rates aren't the best, but you know not, they're not the worst either. Yeah, I think that could be good. And we also have a couple of the the howl from beyonds here. So chain seems pretty good. So definitely not definitely not brute. Sorry, Levia. Um, let me see the warrior. What do we have for warrior? We have engulfing light, courageous. These seem good, but we didn't have any really bomb warrior cards. And to be honest. I don't think I'd want to do that. I, I I could see a defense for this if you really like Warrior, and you think where you can think you can get there. But for, for me, my instinct says to go with either Chain or Prism, which is funny because they're some of the most powerful heroes in the game anyway. For Prism, what sort of light cards do we even have here? I mean, there's some decent stuff, right? We got a lot of these uh, Illuminates, 
So if it hits, you can put in your hero soul, which is not too bad for just kind of like building up our soul. Um, we got a couple decent like rares with uh, Glisten and Invigorating Light. We did get a Blinding Beam, which is pretty good too. Some Rising Solar Tides. Hmm. I guess when it comes down to it here, it's really going to be based off your preference, right? Because assuming you pick one of these two, you still get Plate or let's see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if we went with Prism, we would have a full equipment loadout. If we went with Chain, we would not because we would be running the Aether Iron Weave over the plate, so we wouldn't have a we wouldn't have a arm arm equipment. Hmm. Honestly, with this said, I would probably pick Prism. I honestly, I'd, I'd probably just pick Prism here, even though I really like Runeblade and I really like Chain. Chain is tricky in um, in draft and sealed because you can just deck yourself, whereas Prism. She's just gonna be coming in with big angels all day. And we didn't get like the best big angels, but we got some good ones. Like the Herald of Tenacity is, is quite good. Um, has Dominate on it, just built built in Dominate. Not the best pool. Yeah, not the best pool, but I think it could be good. I, th I think it could be quite good. And so since you're running 30 cards, right, in your deck, once you pick which class you're gonna do. So for the sake of argument, let's just say we're gonna go with Prism, right? Let's just say we're gonna go with Prism. I think you can make an argument for Chain, by the way. Uh, I think it could actually be quite good. It might even be better deck than the, the Prism deck here. But let's just say for the sake of argument and sake of time, we're gonna be playing with this deck, right? Well, say we have these cards. This is the total available pool that we can even run. Let's see how many cards are even in this pool. We only have 39 cards in this pool, which means we only have to make nine cuts. And so, if this is where we're at, if this is what we're going to be doing. Let's kind of put some cards aside here. So say, you know, this is what we're doing. We're, we're playing with Prism. Let's put everything else aside. Your hero and your weapon and your equipment do not count towards your deck size. So this is going to be our hero, our equipment, and all of that stuff, right? So we're playing with, we're playing with Prism. We have our Iris of Reality. We have our Halo, our Dreamweavers, and our Ironhide. So this is gonna be that, we'll just set that off to the side. We already know we're playing with that. For here, what I'd like to do from this point is to just sort it out by attack actions and non-attack actions, um, and then like instants too, because instants are really important to keep track of because they don't actually block, and you want enough cards that block so you don't just randomly die to not having cards that don't block. And then from here, I'm gonna sort them. We have, we're really attack action heavy, which is quite good. Sort them by cards like this one. We're not running Talisman Dowsing. It's just not, it's just not good. We're just not running it. Um, doesn't block. Basically you just have it for Spell Void and that's it. And we don't really care about that. We'll keep it in our sideboard if we really need it, but yeah, so we're pretty, pretty attack action heavy. Like we only have this many non-attack actions and let's see if they actually do anything for us. So basically Warmonger's Recital is gonna be quite good. Minimalism might not be good. It's like buffs up attack action cards with uh, base attack three or less. I don't even know if we can run that. So that's one that I don't even know if it's playable at all. So we're gonna go through and filter that kind of stuff out because yeah, there's another one too, Brandish. I mean, Brandish isn't too bad. We didn't get the card that combos with Minimalism, um, which is fine. So from here, I wanna sort it into pitch values and then go from there because usually the most powerful cards will be in the red pitch and we want to just see how many like how resource intensive our deck is going to be and then basically from here it's just all on your own card evaluation whether you think the card's good or not and trying to get a good balance here we're actually pretty red red pitch light so at this point i would not cut any of these red pitch cards we're going to need them for the power so I wouldn't cut any of these red pitch cards. I also probably wouldn't cut any of these cards. Maybe the Blinding Beam, but I think Blinding Beam is actually not too bad. Even though it has zero defense, it's an instant, it actually reduces the attack. So you can make sure your uh, your illusions hit. Um, for here, we have some not decent, not great stuff. 
We do have a couple three or lower attacks, but not a ton. And then for blue, we actually have a decent number of three or lower attacks, actually. But I don't think we have enough to warrant playing the Minoism, honestly. Um, so for here, we just need to cut seven cards now because we already cut these two. Um, basically, we'll just cut seven from here. Uh, let's see, how many reds do we have here? Three reds and two blues. Yeah, I, I don't feel comfortable cutting any of those reds. Let's see, we have some Herald of Rebirths. Stony Woot and Hogs, a two cost card. Hmm. Pound for pound. Give it Dominate. I think we want to keep a lot of these, but some of these we don't. Like these Illuminates, they pitch for blue, but man, they only come in for, they only come in for two. And that is on hit effect. Not that great. Blocks for three, but those are ones that I'm like, I don't know, man. I don't know. Another thing to keep in mind is the defense value of a lot of the generic cards, because some of them don't have that defensive three. Some of them just have a defensive two, which is another thing to pay attention to. So like these illuminates at least defend pretty well. So maybe, like, maybe we do want to run them. Maybe we do want to run them over something that doesn't block very well, like the surging militia, right? That still, still can attack for five. So yeah, th this is this is where you spend most of your time just whittling down like the last few cards. You can be like, okay, I don't really want to run this Brandish because it doesn't do enough for the deck. Same with this Frontline Scout. Too much setup, not enough reward. Looking at your opponent's hand is actually quite good though. So maybe we would want to put it, leave it in the deck. Pound for a pound, three cost, five attack with Dominate. I'm not sure we're going to want to be doing that. And then, you know, th this is what you do. You just kind of like narrow it down based on this. Seek Horizon. Zero cost, only attacks for two. You can put a card from your hand on top against Go again. But other than that, it's not super fancy and it only blocks for two. So there's another one that you could possibly cut. Rising Solar Tides, a one cost for three. And if it hits, goes into your into your soul. So it's basically like Illuminate just costs more, attacks for a little bit more. Um, four, five, six. Now nah, let's just say, let's just say this is going to be our deck. Basically, and that's what you do. You just kind of like narrow it down, whittle down the cards that you think are gonna make it. Since this is flesh and blood, you're gonna go through almost your entire deck. So you don't feel bad running more than you need to as long as you have enough resources to make it work. This deck, we have an abundance of resources, I would say. You definitely want a decent amount depending on the cost of your deck. So another thing you could do is just sort out the cost of all of your cards. So you have three, two, Three, two, it's a pretty actually heavy cost deck so far. So it's good that we have a lot of these, uh, a lot of these blues, because otherwise it would be very difficult to play all these cards. I imagine if we went with chain, it would be much different in terms of cost, because a lot of the cards that chain has are very low cost. Oh yeah, look at this, man. This is a quite heavy cost deck. So if you're we're still wanted to, you know, get rid of more cards, then I would also look here at some of these two or three cost cards and, uh, you know, go from there. So anyway, that's going to do it for today's video. Let me know what you thought of this. Let me know if you plan on playing in any of the sealed events for the calling Las Vegas. I hope this was at least a little bit helpful. Um, maybe you can get some packs beforehand and practice yourself. It's actually not too bad. Like I said, a lot of it is just figuring out which class has the best pool and then just going from there and then whittling it down after that. You really only have to make like a couple cuts once you do that. And it, honestly, it's not too bad. Thank you so much for watching everyone. Good luck to all of your events out there and I'll see you next time for some more flesh and blood content here on Red Zone Rogue. Have a good one all. We'll see you later.